Welcome back. Hopefully you watched part one of this video. In that instance, we went ahead and we showed you how to install Windows Server. Here we're going to show you how to configure it. Uh, we click on Next during the uh, configuration prompt, and here we enter a tight password. What we want to do is make sure it's at least seven characters, and at least three of those characters are uppercase, lowercase numbers uh, or symbols. So make sure you do it, and it'll actually, it's pretty cool if you look. It, when you do put in the password, it'll tell you if you're doing it right. So it'll make sure that you have a secure password right there. And then, of course, you put in a password hint. And uh, my hint is always no hints because I tend to always remember the password that I'm putting in. So I simply type in no hints. And this is uh, very similar to the Windows Vista and Windows 7 setup. And then, of course, we have do we want automatic updates on this server? And the answer should really be yes. And we'll get here to the Customer Experience Improvement Program. It's sort of like anonymous statistics sent to Microsoft uh, to help them improve their software. We'll say yes. Error reporting, what will we say? Yeah, why not? Our automatic error reporting is fine. And uh, the setup is finished. Now what it tells you to do is log off of home server. They don't want even you to use it. What they want you to do is you take out another CD, the home server connector CD, and you can install that on all of the computers in your home, up to five computers, and you can actually run the server from there. And it'll actually uh, be the same thing. You don't turn off the server, you just log off. And what you do is you put in the connector CD, and we'll do this, and uh, you'll be able to control your server uh, from that location. But uh, And also, this is what gives it the status updates. But here, we're just basically installing some drivers, because we are on a virtual machine uh, to show you this. And... Um, what we're doing is just installing some drivers here and this is something you'll have to do regardless of how you're how you're using server or any operating system eventually you're going to have to install some kind of drivers uh, from the manufacturer unless it's a pre-built uh, machine that you buy uh, in store so we're gonna go ahead and one of the things that's disabled by default on this server is hardware acceleration our drivers sort of require that we enable it and when we come down into the uh, basic interface of uh, Windows Server, uh, home server here, <laughs> well, we're sort of looking at a crippled version of uh, Windows Server 2003, small business server. But it, uh, you'll see the difference real quick. Uh, we'll try to get into it now before we reboot everything and, and continue with the video. But you'll see something right here. Uh, just a sec. We'll move it over. Get that out of the way. And you'll see right here where you now have this interface that's actually quite interesting. Well, you have a neat background that's pretty unique and new. But you also have shared folders on the server, uh, which now every computer that you connect to the server is going to be able to use share, shared folders. But you also have the Windows Home Server console. And real quick, we're just making an adjustment uh, real quick here with our driver support for virtualization. But you'll see now with the Home Server console that you have a list of computers, and here we have none connected yet. You have a list of user accounts. We have none yet. We can set a password policy. We can enable, enable guest accounts. We really don't want to do that. And we have our shared folders, which, oh, and of course we have our server storage area, which will show the disk health and the, the storage of every computer that's connected to Windows Home Server. But we don't have any of this stuff set up yet. So we can't configure backups or do anything yet, but we'll head right to it right now. We are now running one of our client machines. This is Windows 7 uh, 64-bit. Uh, and we have the Windows Home Server Connector CD, which as you see is 1.11 megabytes. We have that set up in Drive D. And what we're going to do is connect directly to our home server by installing the connector software. What's very important for you to note is that you should have 
uh, within Home Server itself every update installed, and that includes Windows Home Server Power Pack 2. You should also have your operating system, which in this case is Windows 7, and in many cases it could be multiple different types of operating systems, Windows 7, Windows Vista, Windows XP. You should have all of those operating systems updated before you decide to create this home server network. Now one thing that is common in all of these instances is that we're, we are on the same network, so all of these computers are connected into one router, um, and including the home server. Uh, so you're doing this within your home using a router, and let us now begin to install the connector software. So we're in computer here. We'll click on Windows Home Server. Uh, we'll see if it can find our good old home server here. Hopefully it can. It did. It's downloading the software directly from HSERV, which is the home server we created. Now remember, that is why having the Power Pack 2 is so important because you're downloading stuff off of obviously the server. And what we'll do here is uh, see that this Windows Home Server connector connects your computer to your home server, backs up your computer daily, monitors the health of your computer, enables you to manage your home server. And this is excellent in that regard. It's something that we definitely want to see for a while, especially some home users. And in this case, we go ahead and we install the connector software. But remember, the connector software is distributed from the server. And because of that, the server needs to be up to date before you make any of these changes. Now here, we come back to what we did earlier in the first video, and that is to input the Windows Home Server password. If you remember, when we created our password hint, we left it as no hints. Fortunately, we know what the password is. We enter it, we hit next. This now authenticates your client computer with home server. Now here's a question that it's going to ask you. Do you want to wake the computer up to perform a backup? Uh, and the two options are yes, wake this computer up if it is in sleep mode or hibernation mode to back it up. The second answer is no, only back up the computer if it is turned on. In this case, we're going to assume this is a desktop PC. We're going to say, you know what, wake the computer up uh, in order to back it up. And that's usually the best uh, option in that case. So it's going to join the Windows Home Server, and it's going to configure the backup automatically. And now you're done. Now, what happens is automatically with the backup, between 12 and 6 a.m. at some point during that time, your computer will be backed up. And now that we see that the home server uh, software was installed, uh, we're also seeing yeah, an antivirus warning that's coming directly from the home server. See, we don't have an antivirus installed on this machine, so we double click on this icon to see, well, what's going on here? And of course we'll type in our password. We'll be able to connect right into the home server. And there may be somewhat of a delay here. And here we are. Okay, so here's the computer. The status is not backed up, as you see. You can configure the backup. So now we're actually in a copy of Windows Vista. And we've already connected the Windows 7 machine, but as you see, we started the backup for Windows Vista. We're also in Windows Vista Ultimate, and we're connected to the server. We use the same steps as we did before. And what's really great here is we can back up stuff at the same time. If we want to initiate a backup for Vista, we can do that as well. If we look at some other options, we have the ability to create user accounts, the ability to use shared folders, which we certainly can. Uh, and the ability uh, to look at server storage and as we see yes indeed uh, 4 gigabytes is already being used for server backup and of course we have the network thing that we have no antivirus on either of these systems these are both clean installs but one thing that's really great about the home server environment is that it allows you to monitor um, 
these these situations and we look here and we say yes a manual backup did uh, complete we can choose whether that we can delete uh, the backups we can automatically manage them or uh, we can keep them and we can certainly restore them as well uh, one thing that's interesting are the features here you can create a you can configure the backups this way um, you can look it will collect the information about your computer you can decide what you want to back up. You probably want to back up all of the volumes. And Home Server can only back up NTFS volumes, but that's usually the majority of computers unless you're an XP. With shared folders, you can pretty much control things. You can add shared folders, um, and there's folder duplication that takes place. Um, you can look at server storage um, again. And you really have an option here to manage a whole bunch of computers that you would not be able to do um, from home without extensively configuring Windows Home Ser Windows Server 2003 or 2008 and spending a whole bunch more money. And we're talking about over a thousand dollars to do this. Windows Home Server gives you the option of doing this, and in fact, with Windows Home Server, you really wouldn't need. Uh, to worry too much in regards to having even a monitor connected to Windows Home Server um, at all, and that's the great part about it. You know, you you just you don't need once it's set up, you can install external devices for the backing up of stuff. Uh, you can set up things like if we go here, we can see all the features. We have general, we have backup options, we have password strength. Uh, and the ability to change the home server password. We also have Windows Media Center, uh, connect with your media. We have media sharing, which is all we've turned on. And we have the remote access. Unfortunately, remote access is very difficult to set up, even in a home environment. And it requires that port 80 is opened uh, and that you're able to access a web page to get onto your computers remotely. Um, as far as add-ins, add-ins are uh, features, feature add-ins that improve Windows Home Server. At this time, we don't really have too many. And under the resource pane, we have some information about Windows Home Server and the version that we're using. And that's pretty much important for contacting support and for using uh, upgrading the home server as well. Uh, but overall, uh, Windows Home Server gives you excellent options for Windows Media Center, for media sharing through uh, Windows Media Player. Uh, it gives you excellent option for backups. And remember, we're limited to five computers here. But nonetheless, Windows Home Server is a great uh, way uh, if you have a computer for your wife, a computer for your kids, maybe a computer for yourself, and a laptop or two. It's a great way for you to manage all of your data in one central location without spending a huge amount of money and that's really the key to Windows Home Server. And so real quick we'll go back and we'll discuss how exactly you can go ahead and restore from backup if you were to need to. Well we're now back in uh, Windows 7 Ultimate and as you see we now have three machines connected and those three machines are Windows 7 Ultimate, Windows Vista Ultimate, and Windows XP. Uh, we're in Windows 7 right now and what we want to do is restore uh, from backup and we might wonder well how do we do that exactly right so we'll look at the backups now and we'll see that a backup was completed um, and we can look at the files here we don't want to look at the reserve partition but the C and we're opening the backup now We'll install uh, this device from Microsoft that will allow us to do so. We pretty much have everything handed to us here. Pretty much explains everything. We can view backups, view the volume, open, open the backup. And when the backup opens, uh, we can choose what files we want to restore, any folders that were on our computer. Um, in some ways, uh, this this type of technology is old hat. This isn't really an image backup whatsoever. And uh, that is kind of disappointing, as a matter of fact. 
um, but we can look here and see where we have our backup files and yeah here's all our files so we can go back and try to restore things and this is the essence of home server 